Okay, so welcome lovely listeners. Um, today's podcast, we have the wonderful Amy Taylor. Amy is uh, part of an organization called SFM, which I've talked about with other people in previous podcasts. Um, and that's how I met Amy. Amy is from the UK, but lives out in Australia. So I welcome Amy. Thank you so much for giving me your time today. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Oh, brilliant. Um, so yeah, so me and you have spent a little bit of time together. We were out in uh, Austin. No, not Austin. San Diego. San Diego sorry. Yeah. Um, we were out there for an event, which was brilliant. And, um, and I know a little bit about Amy's story. And, and Amy is, uh, is actually a mentor for a lot of us. So, um, you know, this podcast is all about amazing people who just get to a point in life where they don't want whatever it is that they've settled for, if that's the word that they use, they're, they're just not happy to do it anymore and, and change direction. And sometimes that can be a pivotal moment or it can just be a process. So, so for you, Amy, um, I mean, obviously I know that you got into SFM and you used to do other stuff before. What does sort of not settling and, and how did that sort of, I don't know, evolve for you, I guess? Wow. Okay. So, um, it's funny cause I knew that that was the, the name of, of the podcast. And obviously <clears throat> in the last couple of days, I was like, Oh, what, where could this go? And it, it, it can totally go into other areas of life. And I was writing about it the other day, actually just doing a bit of a brain dump. And I think in terms of my online journey, um, it was a wake up call after losing a member of my family and just kind of going, he was like my a father figure as an uncle and um we lost him to cancer in the space of a few weeks and like from fine to gone and so that was the wake up call where i was like well he worked his whole life to be able to have a really nice retirement and died at 63 so that was the wake up call for me changing direction and going into the online business but i was thinking about like the feeling around it and it's something i can trace back to moments in my life right the way back to probably being a teenager at school um, and one really crystal clear memory I have is and I don't know that I was consciously going I'm not settling but it was the same physical feeling and it's, it's come up recently because of all the kids that are missing school and exams and all that kind of thing um, <clears throat> was this feeling of in fact even earlier than being a teenager um, been watching a lot recently that's inspired memories or made me remember things was this feeling of you can't have it all um and this memory of being 14 in in the uk in year nine where you have to choose your gcses so you're in, where you you have to choose your subjects for the two years leading up to the end of high school whatever that means for other people and i remember looking at this piece of paper where all my favorite subjects that i was a good at and b loved were all in the same box and so I could only choose one. <laughs> so like it was this memory of, oh, like you can't have what you want or you can't pursue what might be better or explore. And it was funny, like I look back in hindsight and think I've always had that. I've always had that feeling that you can, but there's always an obstacle or something in society or a box you're in that says you can't, but that I've always kind of felt challenged, the need to challenge it. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> so yeah, in terms of my online journey and changing direction in my late twenties, well, I was 30, 31 when I decided to start my online business, that was the big one, but it's a feeling that I think intuitively every human being has and can probably remember moments where they could have tapped into it or were tapping into it, but just didn't know what to do with it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, many, many memories and examples I could give you, but that's probably the most relevant for this conversation because it's where we, how we met in the end. So, so when um, so you, were a <clears throat> you were working as a travel agent, um, yeah. and what you, was that the sales job that you had? Was that travel, was it? Yeah, I, well, I worked for, um, I won't mention the name of the company because they could be, like a lot of travel companies, they could be in the, the proverbial at the moment, but... Um, I started working for them when I was living in New Zealand um, because I had always done, I'd always had like a two year itch with work. I'd done a number of PA jobs, which were great for getting to work with amazing people and sort of high up executives. Um, but just kind of outgrew my role in a PA role when I was living in New Zealand, which, which I ended up 
living there because I'd been traveling and met someone and kind of settled. Oh, okay. <laughs> And so I got the job in travel there and it was with a company that had offices all over the world. So it was a great move because it meant that eventually I did come back to the UK and I had a job waiting for me. And then like living in Australia or anywhere I go, it, was, it just felt like a really good option. Um, so I was kind of with that company on and off for a couple of years at a time in between doing other things like traveling and working on cruise ships. And it was a good safety net to have. Um, <clears throat> but it was also something that it was the first job I'd ever been in in sales, which meant I was earning more money or had the ability to earn more money, which motivated me and sort of woke things up in me that I didn't know were there. And then that led one thing to another. It kind of woke up a bit of an entrepreneurial gene. Um, and then eventually that led to having my own business. So again, the, the, the not settling goes back to a lot of examples there. But yeah, so it was sales. Um, I was in traditional kind of retail travel sales and then there were different departments I worked in and ended up in corporate. So um, I was very much in the corporate world when that was my last job with them before I left to do my online stuff full time. So you were doing the online at the same time as that job? Yeah, I, <clears throat> excuse me, I'd actually already started it when I went into my final job with the company. So I was fortunately able to be very open about it and I, I wasn't kind of covering it up and you know I think it was a very friendly environment and they encouraged um you know big thinking and big goals and and they rewarded it um so it was I wasn't in a situation where I had to keep it a secret or anything like that and I know a lot of people do mm. um which I don't think you should unless contractually you're not allowed to have a side hustle because I think these days if you don't have one I honestly don't know how people get by with one standard salary but yeah. um yeah so I, I was doing it around my job for about 18 months before I left to take the leap as it were so when you talked about losing your family member did that happen before you actually started the online venture yeah so I was working I was in a period between stints with the corporate <clears throat> side of things with travel and I was working on cruise ships and private yachts. And um, that was kind of my almost nailing life option in the sense that I was being paid to travel and tax free and living the life. And it was great, but I was still on someone else's clock and still having it dictated when I could get off the ship or come home. And, um, you know, it was crazy hours at times, but it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, and it was whilst I was away on working on a private yacht that I found out about my uncle being diagnosed with cancer so I literally just dropped everything and came home um, <clears throat> and I discovered kind of um, a couple of the mentors in SFM and and Stuart and the community but I'd not actually jumped in and, and joined so I, I'd get their emails and I'd not really explored it much further and then this happened and I was back in London back at home with no job a little bit of money but certainly not enough to not go back to work um, and that's when I joined but it was good because it was kind of a good distraction through a sort of grieving process, but also something that was just, it just woke me up and was like, wow, there really is more to life. You know, he'd be really proud that I'd started something like this. So it was, it was a good motivator. Good comes out bad and all that kind of thing. So in terms of, um, so obviously you, you took that on, you, mm -hmm. it, it woke things up in you, as you said. Yeah. Um, what was it that sort of, that kept driving you on because I've, I've been doing it along with a job and, and I've sort of parked it for the time being because I've been getting <clears> into <throat> coaching and, and looked at other things as well. Mm -hmm. What was it for you? Because, you know, I, I knew your story. I knew it was about 18 months before you could quit the job and stuff. And, you know, that's so inspiring. Um, and it would be so inspiring for a lot of listeners listening now. So what do you think it was? Was it just um, pure blind faith? Or was it, you know, was it more than that? Because I know it was certainly blind faith for me in the early days. Yeah. I mean, just to be really clear, and I think it's important to note this, and not enough people in the online space do note this, I hadn't fully replaced my income when I quit my job. Right. Um, and I backed myself. Like, I remortgaged my flat. Okay. Um, and I think a lot of people... I, I, I like to highlight that because I think, you know, there's a lot of questionable numbers out there and, and questionable stories. And I, I had enough results to have the confidence to take that leap of faith, which for me was a calculated risk. Yeah. Um, but so it was semi blind faith, but I had some results and it was, so it was, it was a, for, I needed that balance of calculated risk. So it was yeah. some blind faith, but also, um, 
knowing it worked and also just looking at the hours I was working in my job and what I was earning versus what I was earning sort of pro rata for the hours I was putting into this business. And I I just kind of got to the point where I was like, I've got no kids. I'm single. I've got very few responsibilities, but I do have this asset in terms of a property. And I worked out the absolute worst case scenario and was totally fine with it. Yeah. So I thought, well, then why not? Um, And that was the thing. It was just making peace. And I've used this advice because it was the advice I was given by people in the community at the time. Like, you know, there is blind faith and it does pay off for some people, but there's also recklessness <laughs> and then people just end up in the proverbial. Um, but it was, it was literally making peace with the worst case scenario and I was okay with that and it, it worked out quite well. So, yeah. So when you, um, so you had this remortgage, you quit the job. Mm-hmm. How, mm-hmm. how did it then transpire? Cause we were chatting offline earlier and mm-hmm. you know, I'm in a situation at the moment where I'm a little bit, um, a little bit too comfortable, therefore I'm not putting the, yeah. the pedal to the metal. How, I know that feeling. <laughs> yeah, how were you? How did it work for you? Um, it was scary. It wasn't, it wasn't scary at first. So to talk you through that first six months after leaving the job. So I thought I was going to give myself a week off, like a, a total just yeah, go see some friends. Or, yeah, and I was really shocked how um I (laughs) went out for quite a celebration on my last night and I committed to doing we have a 90 day video challenge in the community and I was like right I'm going to be a leader I'm going to do it a second time as soon as I quit my job to sort of journal that journey and I apart from the hangover the next day I felt like I'd been hit by a bus for about three weeks And my mum was just like, well, listen to your body, take some time out. You're okay. And I was like, no, you're right. You're right. It took me about three months before I felt in any kind of, not even routine because I hadn't had to have a routine. I still struggle with that because I still don't have that many responsibilities. I've I've got, I've let myself off now. I'm like, well, this is why you do what you do is to not be obliged by an alarm clock or a schedule. But I think it's healthy to have one. Um, But yeah, it was, what I learned from that is, God, I was only 30, what am I now? (laughs) I was like 34 at the time and um, 33 at the time. And I thought, God, I've only been working in the corporate space and commuting and that whole lifestyle for a couple of years since my last break or travel stint. And it just stopping. It was like my body catching up with, thank God you've stopped. Thank you. And it just made me think or realize like I'm so glad I've made this decision whatever comes in the future because people live like that suppressing that exhaustion or just rolling with it until they're 60 70 and then it will catch up with you then and I just think it does if you're I didn't hate my job but I just think it made me realize that I was just running on autopilot with no regard for how healthy that was um and stopping it just knocked me for six so that was a huge lesson. And then, so I had about three months off where I wasn't actively really doing much in, in the business that was money producing. And then I sort of committed and it, it took about five or six months before I flipped from being in the red to being in the black in the business, um, purely in numbers. Um, and again, that, it, that was purely what I'd put in, the revenue being in the black over what I'd put in myself and the biggest lesson that came from that in hindsight I was fine at the time but was you know if you are going to make that leap I think the balance of of sense of sensibility versus risk and you know bold bold action is important and everybody's situation is different because I then stalled about I, I got I got momentum and everything but I, I stalled about six months after my first six months of great revenue because I was paying myself and I think in hindsight and I'm in a similar situation now is you know the longer you can keep your job the long or you know the longer you can not pay yourself from a business the the profits and the rewards are going to be so much greater quicker um and I think you know I I have no regrets whatsoever but that first six months was really scary (laughs) because I was just like investing 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 and then all of a sudden it turned around but I think 
that's what's so sad is that people do quit too soon because you can be what's that analogy or the, the little cartoons you sometimes see that you're inches from gold and yeah um yeah i could easily have quit before it flipped um and there's just different seasons but that first six months was probably the scariest that's really interesting you talk about the three months because um i kind of feel like i'm in that myself you know i'm doing mm. a bit here a bit here a bit there I'm so glad that the coaching opportunity came along because that's mm. going to be some structure and, mm -hmm. you know, and somebody sort of dictating that, which is great. And I Someone relying on you. That, yeah. And we all kind of need that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. We'll show up for other people more than we'll show up for ourselves. It's classic. Absolutely. Um, yeah. But yeah, I feel like, so, I mean, I found out <clears throat> sort of early to mid May that I was under threat of redundancy and where are we now? We're at sort of middle of July. Right. That's two months and I still feel like I've been a bit floaty floaty but I mean honestly, yeah. I, I had the job until you know later than that but um yeah. but no it's just good for me to hear that because you do start questioning yourself and you do start thinking what the hell is wrong with me and but at the mm -hmm. same time and, and certainly what I've been learning a lot more of of late um is the slowing down to speed up we've all heard that you've got to slow Absolutely. down to speed up um, but also you've got to just be rather than do because all we do is do, 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 do. And like you said, you know, you can get to 60, um, retire and then drop down. You know, my, my father was 66. He never got yeah. to um, enjoy any retirement because he had ill health. So, <clears throat> um, so it, and it happens for so many people, you know, they just keep going and going and going and then that's it. They're gone. What the fucking point was that? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And so, I think yeah. as well, there's, um, I mean, we've both been through a similar process with the personal brand, the brand incubator program. Um, and the visual that came out of that for me was so powerful because it was, I mean, everything that I, I see my sort of personal coaching and whatever I do moving forward as a personal brand is, is very much a sound wave, but it became like this, zigzag of extremes and it's like my logo that which I didn't come up with was this zigzag and I printed it out the other day and stuck it on my wall and I keep looking at it and it's like that's what I want like that's what I want it looks like a lifeline or a timeline like you do in in the program and um I keep looking at it thinking that's what everyone's going through that's that's alive that's that's having any sense of adventure or you know that all my values are incorporated in there but I would rather live with some degree of extremes happening or experience those extremes. And yes, you have to send to yourself and, but you know, it's better than flatlining and, you know, taking a leap of faith and not settling is scary, but it, it certainly keeps you alive. <laughs> um, and I think that's what I love the, the topic of all well, the podcasts and the never settle because um, when, when I started writing about this the other day, the irony to me is that, when you settle, whether it's consciously or not, you actually feel very unsettled. <laughs> and it's like, I think back to relationships that have ended or that I've ended, particularly one that I ended. And it's like, you know, I, I felt unsettled because I was settling. <laughs> and I think it's just this ironic sort of weird contrast and paradox that people are in and it's just a question of are you going to pay attention to that or are you going to pretend it's not there and I think so many people just pretend it's not there because it's resignation and people want certainty and settling is this kind of almost tribal thing that we do because there's so much proof that it's what we do if we step away from that like what's going to happen and it's like well as we've just said the only thing you can guarantee is that one day it's all over <laughs> Yeah. No one's going to give you any certainty other than that, really. Clearly, not even a job. But for some reason, we've all sort of been brainwashed into this thing of, you know, well, this is what you, this is this prescribed life. And for some reason, we all think that's more certain because we see everyone else doing it. So it's this odd thing to just observe. It's like, well, what really is certain? Um, and what are you going to do with that? Yeah, I'd never thought of it like that. Settling makes you feel unsettled, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I was quite inspired by the... I yeah. was just looking at it and I was like, it's so weird because 
whether you want to admit it or not, there's just this feeling and it's physical. And, and, and the minute you get your brain involved, it all goes wrong because it's not logical to jump from a secure, stable job. It's not. No. It's not logical to jump out of a plane with <laughs> even wearing a parachute. But <laughs> I did that it, last year. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, and it, it reminded me, I went on a retreat at the beginning of this year and we were talking about um, evolution. I put this into this article I was writing the other day. It's like our brains or our conscious minds are Darwinian evolution theories. It's like two to 300,000 years old is conscious thought. But when you look at our biologies, our biologies as humans hasn't changed at all for about 500 million years. And so in terms of like, what are you going to trust your gut or your brain? It's like, I'm going to go with my gut. <laughs> and I don't know where you carry your uncertainty or anxiety, but mine is always uh, mostly my gut and chest. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. and, and the minute you try and logic, like apply the logic, I just get a headache. <laughs> so I'm like, well, you know, it, it, I don't know. It's a conversation I could have for hours, but that's something I've really been listening to recently and it's really hard because you want to explain things you want to be polite you want to justify yourself and it's like no I don't know I just doesn't feel right <laughs> um yeah so yeah I was, going, yeah I was interviewing my um my acupuncturist I'm on the previous podcast who um I've known her for 10 years she's absolutely wonderful and um yeah. she was the reason why I she was the she was the pivotal moment for me to start the unraveling of me, which ended my marriage and all the rest of it, because I knew I was living wow. life. Um, but we were talking, and, and she said about we were talking about the it's the better the devil you know. So people are in like shit relationships or shit situations or whatever it might be, and like you said, you, you keep your head under the parapet. You just you just keep going, you keep going, because the thought of, well, if I do change, that is just beyond okay. scary, and it could be worse than mm -hmm. where I am. And, and people genuinely think it could be worse than where they are, but if, if where they are is like miserable, depressed, crying every day, or mm -hmm. you know, going through a, an abusive relationship or anything like that, how could it be worse? It's never gonna be worse, is it? Mm. You're only ever probably going to move from that to something similar. Sideways. Point. Yeah. Um, but guess what? The chances are it's probably going to be better. You know, mm -hmm. if you just take that leap of faith and, and people think, oh, I'll end up on the streets, I'll end up homeless. You won't. Some people might. And maybe some people need that experience. Exactly. Uh, but, but most people will, you know, get resourceful, start thinking, you know, you we, We've got that doesn't family. happen overnight, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. you know, it's, I've been through it, you know, 10 years of, of where I am now, it's easy for me to say, but, you know, I, I, and that was the main reason, I, I basically accredited her with the, the idea of the podcast, really, because um, there are so many people, as you know, Amy, there are so many people that are just miserable and settling and not living their, their biggest life and, and yeah. their best life and the idea of this is to try and give some of those people the inspiration to know do you know what yeah why not why not yeah. whatever it looks like for them just take that little step and then that okay. next step and then that next step and and that's the thing it's just baby steps it's little steps and progression because I think it can get quite overwhelming when you think there's this kind of earth shattering arrival moment where my life has changed. And I think people get romantic about it. Like whether it's a relationship or winning lotto or like the three areas, like your health, it's like one day you wake up with six packs. It's not, it's, <laughs> totally. it's the, it's the just some little like what's next. And actually a book recommendation for anyone listening, male, female, whatever. I just, um, I'm about halfway through it. It's called Untamed by Glennon Doyle. Mm. Um, absolutely brilliant and it's you know I'm sure it's all information we've all heard before that's been rearranged in her words but um, one thing she said at the chapter I finished today was um, and actually no this this was a she has a whole chapter about meeting Elizabeth Gilbert who's another one of my idols who I met on this retreat earlier this year and she she, she they Elizabeth are friends Gilbert. huh you met Elizabeth Gilbert 
Yeah, I like oh, stalked wow. her all week and just hung out with her at dinner and stuff. And just, she's amazing, absolutely yeah. amazing woman. Wow. And um, Glenn and Doyle and her are friends because they've spoken at the same event. And Glenn and Doyle wrote a whole chapter in Untamed about meeting Liz. And um, Liz was at her house. And so, I can't even credit Glenn and Doyle with the quote because she said it was Liz that said it. Um, and she said it's better to, she, her marriage was breaking down and she's actually married to a woman now. Who, Liz? And, um, no, no, Liz was, but Glennon yeah. is. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> like a trend. Um, and she said, better to live uncomfortable truths than comfortable lies. Mm. And I was like, oh, that's nice. good. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's not going to be comfortable. And, you know, settling is comfortable. Um, you know, you, if you use the word settle or settling or settled in any sentence or any context, it just has this, that's what it implies. You know, how are you settling into your new house? How are you settling into your new job? It's like, are you getting comfortable yet? <laughs> it's like, don't. Yeah. It's when it all goes wrong. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm. So, Amy, if you, if there was anything that you could say to somebody that's sat listening right now, stuck, mm. and whatever that is, um, what would you want to say to that person to, to maybe give them a bit of inspiration or, or give them a bit of a breakthrough in terms of what they can potentially do for themselves? Um, everyone's different. I know. Um, but I guess just don't ignore that feeling and you know depending on on what your journey's been and and how familiar you are with spirituality or whatever your version of god the universe energy whatever it is like just don't ignore it don't expect the answer to be obvious don't expect it to be easy but just don't ignore it um and just and although we said before you know we just do 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 mm. do something um whether it's, you know, if you're not, I don't know, happy with your financial situation, then at least just start learning, self-educate, I think, on anything. And we live in a world and an age now where there's no excuse not to self-educate on anything. Um, and I think as well, you know, I'm, I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a therapist or anything like that, but for people who are really extremely feeling it is never ever ever stay silent and that's something that i'm just getting more and more passionate about with not just speaking up for causes but using your voice like if there's always someone that's going to listen um and i think you know that we're seeing a lot at the moment like stories of depression because people just don't speak um there is someone and and communities whether it's facebook groups or you know online communities like we found there's there's other people out there going through what you're going through. Nothing is new anymore. Um, so self-educate and speaking yeah. with those two actions alone, you'll find breadcrumbs of what's next. Um, so I think that's probably my advice, even if it's one thing you read a day or one thing you listen to a day, um, just, just do something every day that's going to move you that, half a degree closer or an inch closer to whatever it will be and I guess on a third and final point would be just and don't have any expectation of exactly what it has to look like just follow mm. that feeling of don't know got to do something um yes. and it just I think it just does become clearer but it's a lifelong thing I think that is to me that is the meaning of life it's not there is no arrival there is no outcome it's just who are you being and you're either someone that wants to grow continually look at some of the most impressive people that have lived the longest lives it's they don't settle they don't stop um yeah i could talk about this stuff for hours but yeah self-educate make sure you're speaking out or using your voice um follow the feelings yeah perfect absolutely perfect that profound uh, enough <laughs> yes very profound <laughs> good <laughs> Um, so if people wanted to, you know, anyone that resonates with you, if they wanted to reach out, where could they find you? Um, 
my I've, I tend to be spending more time on Instagram than I am on Facebook at the moment. Um, my Instagram handle is Amy Taylor Says. Um, my main website at the moment still is yourwifilife.com. Um, either of those is a pretty easy way to find me. Eventually, I'll have an Amy Taylor website, but it's a, a work in progress, much like me. <laughs> um, so I haven't got that far yet. <laughs> But yeah, in, off social media channels, I like Instagram because you can do voice notes on there as well, um, which saves me time. What, on Instagram? Yeah, love I, it. No, I'm so rubbish. I, I just haven't spent the time I need to on that. So. Yeah, you can on Messenger as well, but Messenger, I've taken the Facebook app off my phone. I still use it, but only when I'm on my laptop and I'm just trying to get streamline myself to one platform. And it seems to be where most of my friends are on Instagram, but some of them have come off Facebook. So I'm like, I'm just going to try and be efficient and streamline. So yeah, Instagram's the one for me at the moment. All right, cool. (laughs) Um, Well, thank you so much um, for your time and sharing your story today. Um, It's been, yeah, it's been hugely inspirational. I've learned a few things as well. So um, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you.